Hey everyone, I'm proud to present this latest edition of our live music series, Live in the Sunroom. Today we're going to be spending time with the Abe Mack Band. Abe is a country artist, a singer-songwriter who's paid his dues at local honky-tonks, and he's finishing up work on a new record that's being produced by a heavy hitter in the music business. His band features Marceau on bass, and the very talented drummer Omar Uribe makes a return appearance here in the sunroom. And as a reminder, these are live off the floor recordings, no overdubs, no trickery. The Abe Mack Band performs live in the sunroom. kid from El Paso's Lower Valley become a country musician? My dad and my, you know, I remember specifically uh, waking up, going to Robert Rojas Elementary, and I'd wake up with the alarm on k -Hay, and there was a particular song, it was Admiral by Morning, you know, and I remember hearing the fiddle, da, na, na, na. I don't know, that, that's what kind of like got me interested in country, it's really the fiddle, it had nothing to do with the music, or I didn't even know what the lyrics were, but just the sound of the fiddle, and I don't know if that answers the question or not. And that was the start. That was the start of it, yeah. Country is a very specific genre, 
right? Like, what is it that drew you to country music? It's one of those things, you know, like, I, I can't really consider myself a, a cowboy. You know, I think everybody that lives in the city limits, uh, you're an urban cowboy, you know. I wish I, I used to own horses, and I had horses, and they're expensive, and, and it's either taking care of my kids or a horse, you know, because <laughs> it's just, you know, it's kind of more of a commodity to, to be able to do that, and it's, it's fun, but, you know, it's a responsibility, and, and to me, country music is, is a way of living, you know. You don't, have to, you don't have to wear a pair of boots. You don't have to wear plaid shirts or, or any of that. That, to me, is the essence of country music, you know. It's being very, very grounded in that, that, uh, that essence of, like, I got a flat tire, I'll change it myself. So right now you're finishing up work on your first full-length studio album. You're working with a legendary producer. You're recording at Sonic Ranch, one of the best studios in the country. What's that been like? We got a chance to record with Rob Fabroni, and that is huge. You know, he's a producer for the Rolling Stones, Eric Clapton, Bob Marley, Joe Cocker. I mean, the list goes on. This guy's amazing. He uh, built a lot of studios. You know, he worked at the Power Station and, and uh, you know, telling us stories at Sonic Ranch when we recorded about Phil Spector, you know, like just, I, mean, I thought it was just like phenomenal to hear that straight from the horse's mouth, you know, it's so cool, but all in all, that defines a record, I know I'm kind of, you're, you're thinking, but that's it, you know, Rob provided so much energy to us that it kind of reciprocated, and I mean, I mean, like there was such an emotion in that room that it was amazing, it just happened, you know, we cut 14 songs in seven days. There was a particular song they wrote that wasn't even on our list. We were having breakfast uh, the fourth day, right, guys? And, and all of a sudden, like, you know, we're like, hey, we should do Far Away From Home, a song about a soldiers. A song that, that we wrote about uh, PTSD and TBI, post-traumatic disorder, for soldiers that battled that. And um, we played it. It was one take. After that, there was such a weird vibe in there, you know what I mean? Like, it felt like, like somebody passed away. It was weird. But it was, it was an emotion that... We went into the control room, and uh, you know Rob was sitting there, and he was just speechless. Our guitar tech was his eyes were red, and I choked up halfway through the song, and, and uh, man, intense. And then Rob's like, you know, in, in 55 years plus of recording, I've never had to wipe tears off of a console. And I quote, seriously, that's what he said. So you get to this point where you're working with a legendary producer, you're at Sonic Ranch. What's it going to be like for you to finally give birth to this thing? We, we've been ready, you know, we've been waiting for the opportunity. It's just money is always an issue for a lot of musicians anywhere. And, uh, but, uh, you know, persistence, man. I, I just, you know, I've said a, a lot of people have closed doors on me a lot of times and I just kept knocking different ones. I know there's going to be a door. And, uh, you know, it's just, we met this guy, man. I was playing at Cocoa Bar this one Wednesday. This guy shows up, says, I want to hire you for my party. Uh, I says, I'm booked, man. I play casinos. I'm not going to play. I, you know, I get a pretty good amount of money. I said, I'll pay you double. Drop the check, you know, for a subst substantial amount of money. And I was like, wow. Uh, showed up to his party, played one song. He said, stop. Just I want to talk to you. He's our manager, you know. And uh, this guy, um, it, it, it wouldn't happen without him. I mean, it's kind of like the missing piece. So to answer your question, it has a lot to do with him, with White Knuckle Productions and Oscar Chavira. That's... We were ready. We always felt like, man, we just need that break, you know, and uh, everybody waits for that record deal, but we just happen to meet this guy that is well-funded, you know. He's, he's a great businessman and, and he's got an amazing, I mean, an amazing sense of ambition that it just pours on you. It, that's what it is, you know, and it's going to be fun. You know, Rob's going to come back here in a month and we're going we're gonna to plan out stuff, you know. He's, he talked about Glass Note Records maybe getting us a distribution deal. That's really cool. Whether it happens or not, we still keep on going. I've been restless on whiskey and rum She's been swaying to the beat of my drum Restable jangles on the brink of his speed Fall in love with a gypsy woman speak She needs She needs I've been dreaming I've been feeling laid low Like a tumbleweed rolling Down that highway Many songs it's coming gone 
But I'm still waiting And I swear I see you waving I'm a gambler full of ideal and books I think I was meant to be a lonely man in love Keeps on whispering those love hymns in my ear But I'm just traveling on the way to broken hearts where she, she needs I've been dreaming, I've been feeling little love Like a tumbleweed rolling down that highway Many songs it's come and gone but I'm still waiting, half been dreaming, half been feeling little low. Like a tumbleweed rolling down that highway, many sounds it's coming gone. But I'm still waiting, and I swear I see you waving. Like a tumbleweed rolling. Like a tumbleweed rolling 